AstraZeneca now likely to conduct an additional global trial to assess the efficacy of its COVID-19 vaccine. This after current studies raise questions over the level of protection and the dosing. Joining us now uh, to talk about all of this is Susie Ring, who has just conducted an interview with the CEO of AstraZeneca, Pascal Sorio. Um, what did we learn? What did he say about what happens with the, with the studies that were conducted and the dosages? Kind of how much clarity do we understand around what went on? He said that it shouldn't be viewed as a mistake. Ultimately, they did have a lower dose than they expected that they gave to participants, and they looked at that, and rather than deciding to scrap you know, those participants from the trial, they had discussions with regulators, they had discussions um, with each other and decided to keep them as part of the cohort. Now, you know, they didn't expect that, that group to have a higher efficacy rate, for sure, um, but now that that's come out, they don't see it as a mistake or a bad thing. They see it as evidence that they can do further studies to show a higher efficacy rate if they can um, get more data on that dosing level. What I just read suggested that this was going to be a global trial. Is this a global trial or is this a trial aimed at achieving FDA clearance? It is a global trial. They had said on Monday that they would likely add an arm of a trial to the U.S. because the U.S. trials haven't been completed yet and that they were planning to discuss with the FDA this week how they would do that um, as a way to kind of shore up this higher efficacy number. They what. Pascal said today, which is um, which hasn't been said previously, is that they actually think they will probably do a global trial. I imagine because they want to make sure that they, you know, can have no question of the ultimate efficacy rate that comes out from that lower dosing regime. So we would expect now them to set up in the near future the second arm, not just in the U.S. but globally, and that would also help in terms of diversity and demographics. Okay, well, let's talk about that. There were some questions as well surrounding whether or not there was a significant or suitable component of the trial that was in an older age cohort. Did he say anything about that and how are they going to correct that? So, again, that would be addressed by these new global trials. The cohort that got the half dose um, that wasn't originally intended but that they followed through with only went up to age 55. So that obviously means we don't know anything about how that lower dose would react in older, part in older people. This global trial would look to address that. So what we'd be expecting them to do is to have a range of ages, a range of ethnicities, exactly what we've seen from the other trials, to firm up, you know, was this just a fluke? Was this just yep. because younger people can respond better to vaccines? Or is this actually a lower dose, a more effective vaccine. Susie, will this affect approval in Europe? Pascal believes not. He thinks that the vaccine is still on track for approval potentially by the end of the year, both in Europe and the UK, uh, which is what he said previously, and he's standing by that. They have this uh, lower efficacy rate, which still comes above the you know, FDA benchmark of 50%. They have the 62%, so they believe they can get approval on that basis. In terms of the US, they had acknowledged that things would probably be slower, which was always actually a question mark because they didn't know how much yep. the US would need US trials to be completed for them to get approval. This has added an additional question mark to that, so that probably will be slower. However, he doesn't think it's going to lag too much, he said today.